Hey, here's a quick start in animating an object in Blender. This is Blender version 3.6 something, um, which loads up with this splash screen where you can start with video editing or general or 2D animation. So we're going to pick general or you can just click away, which is the default. So that gets rid of the splash screen. And you see three objects, a lamp, which um, a light here, which you can select over in the scene collection area. So I'll just click these, the cube and the camera. The only thing I want to get rid of right now is the cube because I want to animate a bouncing ball. So I'll just hit the delete key on the keyboard, not the backspace, but the delete. And I'm going to go into a shift A, or you can go to add, which that menu is uh, brought up by the shift A. So same menu, and I'll just do A. UV or an icosphere. So an icosahedron type of sphere is uh, just all triangulated, whereas uh, the other kind of sphere is more latitude, longitude, kind of uh, graticule based. Anyway, um, whenever you make a new object, you get some parameters here so you can change its radius. And it's in meters, and we can change units. If we're going to 3D print, we might want to pay attention to those. But um, the other thing I want to do is increase the number of subdivisions. And I just want to show why I want to do that. So let's put it at 1. And zoom in here. And then I click and drag on that. And so here's 3, 4, 5. So for a nice smooth sphere, um, you can add more subdivisions. You can also change your view of this to see the edges. So you can see the individual edges at that at that level. So um, we can smooth this out as well um, with the material. So we don't, um, like maybe we could do it right now. Somewhere in here, shade smooth. And um, so now that I've done something else, I can't get back to these parameters um, in the in the object. So those are gone, but um, there are other ways to pull those up and you know, change those initial parameters. Anyway, there's my sphere. Now I want to put a floor down, perhaps, um, so I could something to bounce off of. So Shift A again, and under Mesh, there's a 2D object called a plane. And this time, I'm just going to scale it way up. So maybe we could bounce off of that. Um, maybe I'd want, well, let's just leave it like that. So maybe a little bit. <clears throat> OK, so I'll click back on the sphere. Now I can see just by clicking and dragging on the middle mouse button. It's also a wheel, but it's a button when you press it. And we can see the sphere is centered. The center of the sphere is centered in the z-axis, so uh, there's ways to move it, of course. So um, the easy keyboard way to do this is G for grab, and then I can move it around, right? Then I can constrain that motion in the z direction by hitting the z key. So now this blue line shows up, and I can move this thing in the z direction. So there I go. But I can't really tell where it is. I mean, I know it's over the center, but... Uh, I can hit 7 on the keypad, so if you have a numpad on your keyboard, you can hit the numpad, and you can see that it's in the center. So here I can hit uh, G again, and then X, so I can move it over on this end of the plane. Not right-click, but um, use the middle mouse wheel and hold it down. There it is. There's where I want the ball to start. Now we see a timeline down here, and I'll just start animating at this point. So we've gone over, well, we really haven't covered a lot. This is just a quick start, but uh, we've added some stuff to the screen, and we've uh, now we can start animating. With the ball, um, I'm going to set this as the beginning position. Maybe grab it in the Z direction just a little bit higher. Now, um, on frame one, that's where I want it to start, so I can hit I on the keyboard, and that inserts a keyframe for its location, right? So now I have, by slide of time, I have a little star down here by that zero. So at frame one, I have um, the position of that sphere uh, there. 
uh, the plane is not being animated, it's not selected. So if I deselect something and select something else, that keyframe that I saw is not going to appear. So you have to have the object that you're animating selected so you can um, see where the keyframes are. Um, these keyframes are in 30 frames a second. So um, a third of a second is pretty quick to drop to the floor, but it depends on what it, what it is and how high it is, and the scale and all that kind of stuff. So if this was a BB, then maybe that's not, it's only an inch off the floor or something. So um, then it wouldn't take very long to fall. If it was a beach ball, then maybe that's really high and maybe I'd want more time. So as far as the time scale goes, we'll address that later or maybe not at all. Okay, so at frame 10, I slide to frame 10 or maybe 15, which is um, half a second. So a little bit easier to maybe deal with. And I'll bring it to the floor. So I'll make the motion and um, bring it down to where I see it kind of touching the floor. But um, it'd be easier to know where that is. So... Um, just want to point out one thing, so I'll hit N on the keyboard. That pulls up these tools, and this tells me the scale or the and the dimensions of. So the scale is one, and the dimensions are 0.74. So if I put the uh, sphere at a location of half of 0.74, which is what 0.37, then it should just touch the floor, right? So um, how do I see that? I can hit one on the keyboard. One, and zoom in. So um, now to pan, I have to hold the shift key down and then uh, drag my middle mouse wheel. And that pans it over. And I'll have to hit one again. And I'm in the front perspective uh, viewport. Now I can hit five in the middle. Um, and zero to look at the camera. So I can see that this is out of my camera view. Um, five puts me in an orthographic mode. So if I hit one again and then pan around, then I won't be able to see the top of the floor. I'm in a what's called an orthographic uh, view of that. So anyway, I can see that I'm at the bottom of the sphere because its location is 0.37, which is half of the dimension of this sphere. It just touches, okay. So good enough. However, um, dragging my middle mouse wheel, I want to move it forward a little bit so the ball can like look like it's like being thrown or something. So uh, in the X direction, so G X, and then move it forward a little bit. Okay. So um, now I add a keyframe, so I and location. Now if I slide between the frame, I can see that I've animated those two positions. So the rest of it is just a matter of I'm just going to add 15 frames each time, and then I'll just move it up. And um, an easier way to do this would be to go to the front viewport and um, do the motion here. So I don't have to do like GX or anything. I can just do G, and I can move it up and insert the keyframes, slide the time forward, G. Move it back down and maybe just I did this 0.37. There, 0.37. So it actually touches the floor. That's nice. Add the keyframe, which is I location. Slide my time forward. G, a little bit higher, or I mean a little bit lower. It's about the same distance forward. Just guessing on these. Insert a keyframe again. And we'll do a few of those. So adding 15 frames. For a little, little bit more. Ooh, got it. And insert a keyframe. Now, if I hit I here, it's going to try to type in an I. So I'll just um, shift key and, or just right click once in the screen. And scoot that over a little. And then, yep, one more bit. So insert location. Slide my time. G on the keyboard to pick it up. 
Now I'm kind of losing track of where all those are, but we're going to check that in a minute. Okay, uh, I'm going to get it to land one more time, and that will be the end of this. So I moved it before I actually slid my time, which is no big deal as long as I don't forget to. Now I can, it's still, um, well, see, I can, um, once I've moved that, it went back up, so. Almost foolproof. Okay, insert that keyframe. Okay, let's say that's enough bounces. Slide the time. And you might notice that it doesn't look real natural, and that's because the ball is swooping in, so the easing amount is not correct um, for this for this animation. So uh, that's the next thing we're going to adjust and that's under the animation workspace so all these workspaces allow you to see um, different modes here um, i see two screens here um, kind of don't need both of them so i'm gonna right click in the middle and i'm going to join areas and this is well either way uh, that way i can just see what i'm doing here i'll hit one on the keyboard again and zoom out there that way I can see it now up here. Uh, I can uh, so what I'm seeing here is are just keyframes and for the sphere. Um, but what I really want to see is the um, the what do you call it the um, graph graph editor here. So it toggle graph editor. There it is. Okay. Um, I'm seeing all kinds of um, colored lines here. The X direction is red, so X is red, Y is green, Z is blue. So X, Y, Z, R, G, B, um, that's how it usually is. Um, the X is okay, you know, it's, it's, it should be pretty linear, and it might be a good idea to get rid of these keyframes or just adjust them to where they're um, in pretty much a straight line because the ball kind of it well at every hit it probably should slow down a little bit lose a little energy but what i really want to focus on is the z okay so here's the z and i can turn off the y and x so i can just focus on that and even make that a little bigger okay so the tops are fine nice curved top like it would rise and fall but these uh bottom keys need a little help so if i right click on that i can change the easing type um, actually just the, the interpolation mode to, um, Bezier. And that way I can grab one of these handles. Oh, and if I right click on the handle, I should be able to change the handle type to free. So I can make that like a corner and raise those up. So now when it hits the floor, it'll come down and immediately go back up instead of slowing down and speeding up. So it's actually speeding up into the bounce and accelerating out of the bounce and slowing down at the top. So I kind of want to do all that with both of these. So with all the bounces at the bottom, that's what I meant to say. So let's do that. Without spending a ton of time on how realistic that's going to be, it looks like the tops are a little too, too sharp as well, but it should be okay. Yeah, I would like to see that a little bit wider as well. Nice rounded top like a parabola, as things fall parabolically in the, on Earth anyway. Okay, something like that. Let's see what that looks like in the screen. So I'm go back to here. And then scrub through my time. And now I'm getting more... Yeah, that, that took a bigger jump. So perhaps I'd want to not go as far in the X direction. For that, but um, other than that... so. Z. Looks like, yeah. So, get that 
So I'm just straightening this curve out slightly. Every bend should get, every um, keyframe should get a little bit less slopey. Put that down a little. So slightly losing energy every bounce. Yeah, something like that. Still a big jump between here and here, but it's okay. Bring that forward a little bit. Okay, without... Okay, good enough for now. Okay, now I have a bouncing ball. Um, I want to put a couple of materials on it and render it, and that'll be our the final result is in a rendered animation here. So as far as materials go, and lighting, we'll talk about that, and sound. So we'll, we'll try to add these uh, real quickly here. So with the ball, I have the object properties here. Um, however, I can go to its material properties, and we see that it has no material. So let's add a, add a material here. And it will, well, here's its base color. So I can change its color to like a red, but I'm not gonna see that in the screen unless I go to the shaded, uh, change the viewport shading, and now I can see the red ball. Okay, and then um, we can also see the, uh, how it would look rendered as opposed to just shaded with the materials. So that's a material preview, a rendered preview, just a shading preview and a wireframe preview. So. Here's the material preview, um, which you can also do. Maybe I'll want to do this with the floor. So I just have a red ball here, and we can adjust some of these things, such as the index of refraction. The specular properties are how shiny it's going to be, um, the roughness of it as well. So we can add, adjust those or even make it metallic. So I'm going to leave it like a rubber ball, a little bit rough, a little bit uh, low, well, medium, medium. So that's going to be typically a plastic rubber ball. The floor, however, maybe we'll add a, a different kind of color rather than a base color. I can click on this little node by the base color and change that to um, like a checker texture. And there's the checker. As far as the scale goes, we can increase that scale to put more checks on, uh, let's just go 20. Okay, so now we have more checkers and we can change the colors of our checkers. We can even put checkers inside of checkers or whatever. So let's just use this array of pretty colors. There we go. That's pretty. At least I can see it and I'll be able to see the shadow from the lamp or um, an environment lighting or whatever. So um, we'll see. We'll see how that looks rendered when we come out. Now, as far as like rendering it goes, um, that that's our next. Well, we have to look at what what how it's going to look rendered um, with the lighting, right? So if I choose the light right now, it's a point light, but if I choose it as a sun, then we can get an angle on it, and we can have the um, more realistic lighting. A point light would be like an indoor thing. This, this could be indoors, I guess, too. So let's see what, um, when the ball gets close here, we put it in rendered, we should see some, yeah, a little bit strong on the sun, um, but we can see a shadow on the ball. So as the ball comes into plane, we can see a bounce, you know, let's see the shadow, which adds more realism. But the sun's pretty bright here, so maybe we could tone the strength down. Let's try 20. Yeah, we should be able to still see the shadow and the regular floor color without it being washed out. So that's exposure and things like that. So we'll get into those later too. Okay.
So let's say I'm ready to render. I got to set up my camera to look at um, the whole scene. I think the camera is probably too, too close. And I can see that by hitting zero on the keypad, not the keyboard, but the keypad. So hitting zero. And this is what I would see in the animation um, inside this box. So I would just see the ball enter the frame and at frame 15, the first bounce, and then go outside the frame. So I got to back that camera up, it looks like. So um, an easy way to do that is just use your viewport. So hit seven on the keyboard and there's my camera. I could also select it if it's kind of hard, if things get in the way, that's why we have the scene collection where we can select the camera and I'll just grab it and I'll zoom out, grab it, move it back. Okay, and then go through again. And now it's uh, not tilted quite right. So maybe I need to grab it in the Z, so G, Z and then lift that up a bit and I can keep dragging I, I can see my cursor scrolling through the screen and something like that let's see what that's going to look like so still a little bit out of the frame so I might need to rotate that uh, camera so that I can get a bigger uh, field of view of course I can edit the field of view also under the camera properties here and depth of field uh, there are some um, really just changing the focal length, put it down to like 35 millimeter. That might look better. So let's just go through, see most of those bounces. So maybe I want to tilt that just a little bit. Move it more towards the center and rotate it. See what that looks like. That may be a slightly better look. And then back it up and listen. Okay. So that again. Back it up. Okay. So maybe I like that comes in. I don't have to see it. And yeah, I would just want to tilt that camera up a little, and I think that'll It'll work just fine. So let's see, if I hit R for rotate, I still have the camera selected. Here, well, I'll go back to the camera view. And R for rotate. And it's rotating around the wrong axis, and that's, uh, that's okay. This time I want to rotate it about its own Z, perhaps. And that'll pan it. Um, it's not the one I want, so hit right click, and maybe it's the Y. So R Y, and that's gonna. It's not the one I want, so right click, R X. There we go. So let's try that. Yeah, I think that's probably just about right. <laughs> Okay, so let's say I'm ready to, I have no background and things like that, but uh, we'll get into that as well. Um, but anyway, I have two materials on this, um, and now I just want to render it. So as far as rendering goes, there's a couple settings that we want to um, take a look at. So if I go to this little TV looking um, icon in the tools over here, um, I'm going to change to the cycles render, which is a more realistic look and as far as its settings go I want to look at the rendering tab here and take a look at some of the settings um, most of these we'll get into later but really I just want to check the um, the render settings for how many keyframes um, it, it right now it's at uh, ending at 250 so let me go back here so i have 250 um keyframes but um i the animation that i want to see only goes till you know perhaps 105 here so let's just change that end to Okay, now under 
the under the output properties, which is um, just underneath the render, uh, rightfully so, we can see the resolution, and that's um, that can be changed as well. But that's a good HD resolution. And we see that the end frame, which I've already changed, is is at that uh, 105. And as far as the output goes, this is the folder where it's going, and that's in the C temp folder, which is fine. So I'll just give it a file name here, and just call it bounce. Okay, so, and the file format here, um, it could be in any uh, image format, um, like a PNG, and that would render a key, every frame in this animation it would come out as a PNG, and then you could post-process that. Or you can go directly to um, an, uh, uh, video format. And that's what I'm going to do in this case, because it's just a small animation. But yes, larger animations, you definitely want to use image and uh, process those images later. So um, that's good. Um, I didn't put any sound into this animation, but I should probably add a few bounces, uh, bounce sounds uh, to this animation. So let's do that next before. Well, this would be this would be how I would set this up, but I have no audio yet. So that would be the um, I didn't talk about this encoding, but we do have some other um, encoding uh, parameters, but um, Metroscope should work pretty good. So um, we have no audio right now under this encoding. Uh, we should want to put, um, I would just put an MP3 for this, and we'll add the sound now. So to add an audio file to this, I would want to add my video editing and uh, workspace. And in this workspace I can find, I do have a file all ready for us. Six. I think I have this one. So I'm going to drag this into. It's just a very small file here. And we'll zoom in. So I'm going to put it at the keyframe that it needs to be um, where I need the sound to happen. I need to make it, uh, I need to make copies of this, right? So Shift D, and it allows me to add another. Um, and so I want to look at how many bounces I have here. One, two, three. So I want four total bounces. So I'm going to these. Now I just need to place them correctly. And in order to do that, I want to uh, look at the timeline here. And I'm seeing uh, this in seconds and frames, or uh, ticks, I think is what that's called. And if I want to go back up here, this is at a 24 frames per second frame rate. So I thought it was at 30, so I'm just going to make it 30. And now I can put this at half the time. So the start frame, um, that's where I wanted to uh, begin. Okay. Last one um, at 105. Good. And it doesn't matter what channel it's in. Okay, so back to the layout. Now I should be able to start back at the front and listen to the ticks. So it sounds like a nice hard, which isn't really the plastic. Maybe I should make that glass or something. Anyway, um, if I want to scrub through that, I want to enable scrubbing with that. So when I drag this through it, There we go. Okay. 
there's the sound. Now I'm ready to render it. So under the output settings here, um, well, there's render settings and the output settings. Now I can set the encoding, which I think I already did, to um, the MP3 stereo, and that's going to be fine. So I'm ready to render this thing out uh, with all the lighting. Now we're going to have a black background, but we'll we'll call it good. So I'm just going to go to render and render the animation. After a few seconds, it's still running at frame one, um, and that's the cycles rendering. And I did forget one thing, so I'm going to stop this just by shutting that down. And under Edit and Preferences, since I do have some GPUs going on here, I want to... Oh, we are doing that. Um, under the render settings, we it's on CPU, so I want GPU compute. Let's see if that's any faster. When I go to render it, F12 should, should do that. And now it should go a little faster this time. Depending on the computer you have, this may this may take quite a while. Oh. Did I... Yeah, I just hit F12. Sorry, um, that'll just render the image. So here's the render animation now. So now I'm in frame one, and see how fast I can get to frame two, and then I'll just pause it until it's done. There's frame two. Okay. So a couple seconds per frame, um, pause it and come back. Hey, uh, it's at 100, frame 105, it's all done. So let's go take a look at it. Here's the C bounce. There's the file that it produced, uh, Etrusca. I guess that's an MKV. So there, it's playing. Let's play it one more time and then we'll be done. Very good. So to quickly summarize, we produced a ball and a plane. Uh, we animated the ball, uh, adjusted the animation in the Z direction so it looked more like a bounce. We added materials. We made sure the lighting was the sun, and we turned down the intensity of the sun, um, added some audio to the audio track, and rendered it out. And that's our end result is a file that can be shared and in place. So that's the full pipeline of 3D modeling. Thanks.